I noticed when we were hitting the trails and if we're doing a lot of hills, because we didn't have this thing with the correct gear ratio, the transmission was getting hot. I mean, actually, transmission. transmission. Well, this so probably worked too. Scan. Yeah, yeah. I have it set to alarm at like 225. It should be running around 200 degrees and a little bit below that at all times. It was. It got up to 225 on the trails at uh, anyway, hey. and it's been hovering around 200. So that's added wear and tear on your drivetrain. So something to consider if you're going to big tires, you might want to plan this type of job in the near future, gear swap. I'm taking it out to the, the most extreme power level at 513s because we're only on 37s. Now I could get away with putting 38s and 40s on here at 513s. Um, but a good ratio would be 456, 410, uh, no, 488. Um, for 35s, if you want to go 35s and then eventually go to 37s, 48s, probably a good gear ratio, even with 35s. So. You jumped straight to the big boy tires. Yeah, I jumped. I made that leap. So we just removed both axle shafts. We have the drive shaft out. As you can tell, calipers, uh, rotors, diff cover. Now we are at the point of taking our carrier out and getting things disassembled. Well, we gotta get the locker switched out. That's the first Can't step. forget about yeah. that. Because yep. we kind of did on the front. Well, we didn't really forget about it. We just. Um... We didn't realize you had to unbolt the plug from the actual housing on the exterior. I was pulled otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I guess they made it easier because people are probably swapping these gears all the time. They're a hybrid Dana for They you. are. Dana's. They're not a conventional Dana. I'm going to put you on the news. They're, they're the new ones. Bench is a little messy, guys. But, yeah, um, <laughs> cameraman didn't organize it. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but same principle with the front. We're going to build this one. Probably not going to video any of that because you saw it. You saw everything that we did. Same exact procedure. All right, guys. So now with the carrier rebuilt, with the ring on the carrier, and everything's back together, bearings. We just installed the pinion, well, we're installing the pinion now. Tightening down the pinion nut, and uh, he's got that really neat tool right there, that, that homemade uh, JP shop official. We're gonna patent that. I'm sure there's already tools out there like we were talking about earlier, not on camera, but that's pretty neat. Got it, it's got a ratchet strapped over there. And then when he needs to check it, he's, yep, that's what he does, just pops it off there and checks it. So Tracy's got the pinion torque all set, the spec. Do I? Well, that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> he's got it set to spec, and we're getting ready to put the carrier back in, and we're gonna do a test pattern with the shims that he mic'd earlier, so he has the correct shim.
just like the front guys, you can't mess these caps up. And all the shims and everything are different sizes. Well, you can. You can't mix them. Well, you can flip well, this upside down. But there's an arrow. If, you, if you're not following it, you don't see the arrow. Or something wrong. But Man, well, I missed that arrow that one You're time. probably right, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I had to put a disclaimer at all the bottom of the videos. You think we're going to hit spec first go around? What do you think, guys? 3-6. That's where we got to be, our first... See if we hit it our first go around. Yeah, we're over. We are at 8. So we have too much. Too much on the back and not enough on the front. For the, the factory shims. Womp womp. Now here's the game where you gotta take the carrier back out, put some other shims in, and just keep going back and forth till you hit the happy medium where you're in spec. It's the fun times. Here. I mean, it's good. You need to put as much uh, paint on there as possible, you know? <laughs> All right, guys, so after back and forth twice, we were able to get it within spec, six thousandths. Um, I'm not even going to tell you what the shim packs were that we put in because it really doesn't matter. Every application is different, but uh, a lot of back and forth. Now we're going to run another test pattern. Fingers <laughs> crossed that we are good to go with that. And um, then we can put in our crush, crush, um, yeah, crush I mean, sleeve. Yeah. I won't pronounce it, so. oh, yeah, I, I, think, I think we're dead on, dude. That looks good. It's coming off a little bit right there, but it's centered. I think it's good. Why, how do people do this with grease? People do that with grease? Yeah. That's insane. Like, they'll just put some grease out of a tube out of it, spin it by hand, and then look at it. Yes, keep with my cookie. Hey, it's, it's 35 minutes. You failed. Bullshit. And Keith had to find the ground for you, the ground issue. Nope. So. Keith, you want to this? Looks good, Keith. I might have got a little overzealous with the paint, but it's all right. I think we're good. Face is good. It looks really good. And there goes the pinion. So now that we got everything within spec, we got to take everything back out. As you see, everything's already out. Because we got to install the crush washer and reassemble everything all over again. It's good times. It's a lot of repetitive stuff here, but. That's how you do it when you're doing it right. We're not doing the axle seals. This go around. And if we were, I think I was talking to Keith about it. If we were going to uh, replace the axle seals, we would probably go with Gen Mopar parts for that. And when we redo the front axles, when we put the new front axles in, we will be putting new axle seals in at that time. And we're going to be using Mopar. Right there, guys, is the crush sleeve. There you go. Wash it. Sleeve, crush, washer, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta crush that. And uh, Tracy loves that part of the install. That's one of the other reasons why you didn't see me doing it in the front. <laughs> I might have to film it this time. No. Actually, yeah, I've got a camera. I hate doing that part. It's very easy to go over very quick. Yeah, and once you go over, guys, it's you're done. done. You Game over. You, you need another one. All over again. Yep, you need another crush collar. Crush sleeve, installing the pinion seal. There you go. It's finally in. <laughs> yeah, after a lot of trial and error. And that is a pinion seal. All right, so now we're reinstalling the pinion with the crush sleeve, crush collar. This is the spot where it gets a little scary because if you go too much, 
you're done training, so you've got to take it all back apart again and use another crush collar. Um, so that's why Tracy's taking it off every so, like quarter turn and checking it just to make sure he's, he's getting close. And once he gets to the point where he's happy, that's where we're going to put the torque meter on there and check the pinion rotation. Rotational torque on the pinion. See, just a little bit at a time. Check. All right, we got our pinion nut to spec. Yeah, we just dropped a massive ratchet drive. So yeah, we got the we got the pinion nut to spec. It's at 20. We were we were at 15 for quite some time, 13, 15, and then uh, it's always good from the guys at the JP shop to, to get it as tight as you can. So not as tight as you can, just yeah, well the possible in spec. In spec, yeah. Tight as, tight as you can and you can and within spec. Um, but don't go over it because if you go over it you're done like we were saying. So cool. Time to put the carrier back in. Yeah. A little update guys. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. He's put a rag on there but he's got the caps all torqued down and now he's going to clean up the gasket around here. We're going to put some new silicone down for our dip cover and then we're going to put our axles back in, our brakes and tires and then we're going to refill her and then we are we are done and torque the wheels and we're going to retort the wheels of course that's what we always do here at the jp shop wheels always get retorqued after we take them off all right guys we got everything reassembled everything's torqued wheels are back on we are good to go we're filling up the diff right now with our b synthetic zams oil well in the easy pack tracy's going to fill her up probably take Two quarts in the rear? I don't know, it's on the paperwork. Yep. Guess I should get you another one. <laughs> there wasn't much in here. No. They're like grown up juice packs. It's a grown up Capri Sun. Nice thing with the Easy Pack guys from Amsoil it's less mess, less waste. <laughs> I was half tempted to just squirt it everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. So we are done. So the only thing left to do is road test it, and then we're going to do three heat cycles to break in our new gears. Break them in right. So we're just going to run them for a while, let them cool completely down, run it again for a while, let them cool completely down, etc., etc. But we are done. One thing I forgot to mention, guys, one thing you want to do after you're completely done before you do your road test is that you're going to want to retune your vehicle with uh, there's all kinds of devices what we sell here at the JP shop is the super chips so you can check out that you could get that information on the website I'll put it in the video description so we're gonna adjust our gear ratio to 513s from 410s that's what we're gonna do before we take the Jeep back out on the road otherwise yeah it's not gonna be shifting right it's not gonna feel right but I already took care of that with my trail dash 2 my super chips trail dash 2 we are good to go as always, what as oh, what? What time is it? It's 510, Tracy called it. Well, we're a little bit past, took a little bit more of a launch break than we normally do, but uh, it's 510, full day today. Uh, Three hours yesterday. Yeah, you started what, eight? What? You started eight today? Correct, so, so eight to five. Eight to five today. And about an hour of a break yep. in total, and three hours yesterday. So there you have it, gear swaps complete. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you're stopping by for the first time, make sure you smash, tap, do something to that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Give it a thumbs up. And make sure you check out the jpshop.net. Keith just walked into the garage and then he ran away because he don't want to be on camera. Make sure you check out allbeastprojects.com. Make sure you check out beastsynthetics.com. See you on the next upload, guys. Love you.